Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. This is section 8.7. We're going to look at solving exponential and logarithmic equations. But first, we're going to introduce change of base. Now, we've seen in the previous section that we can take log of base e, the natural log, and log of base 10 with our calculators. But what if we're working with logarithms that have different bases, maybe in this example like base 3? How would I take log base 3 of 7? Well, I could estimate it and say, well, I know 3 to the first power is 3, and 3 to the second power is 9. And this argument here of 7 is somewhere between 3 and 9. So the value of this is somewhere between the powers of 1 and 2. But to find the actual calculator value to get it closer than this rough estimate of 1 and 2, I would have to do something else. Well, to put this into my calculator, I might have to do a change of base. And this essentially is the change of base formula. If we have the log of some base b of some argument a, we can change its base to anything we want by saying log base c of the argument divided by log base the c of the base, where c is just any other number that I choose as long as they're the same top and bottom. What I uh, tell students to do sometimes, because we don't want to uh, confuse our argument with our base, is to draw a line across your logarithm. And if you do that, the base is below that line. So the base, the log of the base, goes in the bottom. And the log of the argument stays on top. We just change the base, hence the term change of base formula. Now, because if these bases are the same, we can change it to anything we want. And since our calculators do log base 10, I can write any logarithm from this form to a log base 10. Or because my calculator conveniently has a natural log key, I could take the log, the natural log of the argument divided by the natural log of the base. And I'll tell you right now, be careful. Use parentheses when you put something like this into your calculator, because you don't want to make an error of what you're dividing by. So make sure you use parentheses. Now, <clears throat> being log base 10 or the natural log, you can use Either or. I prefer this one solely because if I'm writing it out, this is one less letter to write. A little weird, but that's the way I roll. So if we look at log base 3 of 7, now I, this is something that I can put into my calculator if I do a change of base. So I'm going to change it to a natural log. ln of the argument divided by ln of the base. This is something that I can put in my calculator. And when I do so, I'm going to make sure that I add additional parentheses. Now, when I put it in to some calculators, it might give you an initial parenthesis. Make sure you close it. But if you put one in here, make sure you close that so that it indicates the whole quantity. If you have this, make sure you put in those parentheses. So it's a lot of typing into a calculator, but we want to make sure we don't make any errors, so use parentheses. I'll let you put this into your calculator for practice. Now, here's an example that we can work out. So in this example, if I estimate it, I could say, well, I know 5 squared is 25. 5 cubed is 125. So this value lays between 25 and 125. So the power to which I raise 5 is somewhere between 2 and 3. So I know it's estimate, but now I want to find a closer value and put it into my calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm, again, going to use natural log. ln of the argument divided by ln of the base. And if I put this into my calculator, I get an approximate value, because we do have to round, of 2.7889. So this approximate value is between the values of 2 and 3. So my estimate was pretty you know, was accurate. So I know my calculator, uh, I put it into the calculator correctly to get 2.7889. All right, let's look at how we can use uh, some of these properties to solve exponential equations. Now, the first thing we want to try is if they have the same base, that makes it a lot easier to solve an exponential equation. So here we have 2 to the x equals 32. Essentially, it's asking us, to what power do I raise 2 
to get 32. And maybe you recognize 32 as 2 to the fifth. But if you don't, what you can do is to tr attempt to write these to have the same base. Well, this has a base of 2 where my exponent is the variable. Can I write this to have a base of 2? Well, if I factor it down, I know that 32 is 2 to the fifth. Now we could just use a property of equality. Essentially, if I have 2 to what power is 2 to the fifth, well, if the bases are the same, then their powers are the same. x equals 5. And if I go back to the original equation to check it, 2 to the fifth is 32. That's a true statement. I was able to solve for this. Now, they're not always going to be this simple, of course. So let's look at this one. If I can write these to have the same base, then I will know that their powers are also the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize 4 as 2 squared. This is 2 squared. So I write it as 2 squared. But this value of 4 is being raised to the 3x minus 7. 32, as we saw in the previous example, is 2 to the fifth. So I'm going to write it as 2 to the fifth. And that value is being raised to the 2x. Now, they have the same base, but I have to do some simplifying. I can use the power rule and distribute 2 to this power. Well, that would give me 6x minus 14. Or minus 14 equals, here I do the same thing. The, use the power rule. 5 times 2x would be 10x. Now their bases are the same, which means their powers have to be the same. So 6x, oh, I forgot my x there, minus 14 equals 10x. And now we can solve this. I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides and divide by the 4, because that would give me 4x's, and I get x equals negative 7 halves. And I can plug that back in. And what I recommend you do is use this one right here, where they're the same bases. Plug that value in. And what you'll get is 2 to the negative 35th equals 2 to the negative 35th. That would be a true statement. And if you check it, you'll find that yourself. So go ahead and do that. Let's look at another example. <coughs> Again. The first thing I'm going to attempt to do is write these to have the same base. Well, here I have a base of 3. I can't factor that down any further. Here I have 1 over 81. If I factor this, or maybe I recognize 81 to be some power of 3, if I factor it down, this would be 1 over 3 to the fourth. So 1 over 81 is 1 over 3 to the fourth. Since we can factor that down to, three, or to four factors of 3, because it's in a denominator, well, I know my rules of exponents. I can bring it to the numerator by changing the sign of the exponent. Well, that makes 1 over 81 the same as 3 to the negative fourth. 3 to the fourth is 81. A negative exponent says take its reciprocal. I'd get 1 over 81. So this is a true statement. I was able to write them to have the same base. Now I know their powers are the same. x squared minus 8 has to equal the power on this side, which is negative 4. And now I can solve this. I can maybe add 4 to both sides or, or add 8 to both sides and use the square root method. Whatever you prefer, I'm going to add 8 to both sides to get that, and then use the square root method. If I take the square root of both sides, I have to remember plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2. And the square root of x squared is just x. x equals plus or minus 2. I can check both of these solutions. Both make this a true statement. Always check your work. So this is the solution. This one here, I'm going to leave for you to try. Go ahead and do that. Make sure you check. The solutions that you find, you will find two solutions for this example. Write these as the same base, set their powers equal, and solve it using quadratic methods for this example. All right, what if we can't write them as the same base? This asks me, to what power do I raise 2 to get 40? Well, if I were to factor 40 down, I might find that it has three factors of 2. But it also has a factor of 5, which is not 2 to some power. 
or at least not to an integer power. So I have to use some other method. Well, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is I'm going to introduce a logarithm because I want to undo an exponential equation. And we know that its inverse operation will undo this math. So I identify my base to be 2. So I'm going to take the log of base 2 of both sides. I'm using the property of equality. What I do to one side, I do to the other. So I'm going to take the log base 2 of 2 to the x. And what I do to one side, log base 2 of 40. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Now I'm just going to simplify. Log base 2 of 2, well, this reduces to 1 x. Or I could use the power rule, bring it out front. x times 1 is still x. So what I have here is the exact value, log base 2 of 40. But now, maybe I want to find some other value that gets me even closer. If I estimate it, well, I know 2 to the 5th is 32, 2 to the 6th is 64. This is somewhere between 5 and 6 for this value. Well, I want to find that value. I want to plug it into a calculator. Well, if I want to plug this into the calculator, maybe my calculator doesn't have a base 2, but it does have the common log and the natural log. So I'm going to use change of base here x equals, and I'll use log base 10 this time just to mix it up, log of the argument over log of the base. And if I plug that into a calculator and round it to a specific value, I'm going to get, and I already did plug it into a calculator, and I got 5.3214. Nine. So this approximate value is the solution. And if I plug it back in, 2 raised to this power will give me 40, or pretty close if I only went to four, uh, four digits here. So <clears throat> that was a lot of work to solve this exponential equation. We, used, we identified the base to be 2, so we took log base 2 of both sides to get x by itself. There is a quicker way. And it's using change of base, that change of base, right from the start. So let's start over. I'm going to leave our solution there, because we'll find that we'll get the same answer. I can use change of base right from the start. If I want to put it into a calculator, because I recognize 40 is not a perfect power of 2, I'm going to introduce a natural log, something I can use in my calculator. And now I'm going to solve it. Well, I'm going to use that power rule, bring that x out front. And then to get x by itself, I can divide both sides by ln of 2. ln of 40 divided by ln of 2. And if you recall the work we had here, when we used change of base, I had log of 40 over log of 2. Well, here I have natural log of 40 over natural log of 2. That is x. Plug that into your calculator. I'm going to leave that for you to plug into your calculator, and you're going to see you get the same solution. So introducing a new logarithm right from the start, one that we can use in our calculator, is going to be less steps. And we won't have to use the change of base formula uh, per se, but it is change of base. We're changing the base right from the start. Let's look at this next example here. Here we have e to the negative x. And hopefully we recall e is just some irrational number. And it's equal to 0.04. So e to the negative x is 0.04. So since I've identified the base to be the natural number, I know that I could use a natural log. So I'm going to introduce the natural log of this side. But using the property of equality, I want to introduce the natural log of this side as well. Now I can use that power rule, bring that x out front. Negative x ln of e equals ln of 0.04. Now, if I simplify this, I could divide both sides by ln of e. But ln of e, they have the same base. So since they have the same base, this reduces to 1. Negative x equals ln of 0.04. Well, I want x, so I'm going to multiply through by a negative or divide by a negative 1, however you want to look at it. 
This is the exact value. x equals negative ln of 0.04. If you put this into your calculator, and because it is a natural log, you can do that. You have that key. You're going to get an estimated value. And I already plugged it in, and I got 3.2189. So this is the estimated solution to this example. And if I go back to the original problem and check my work, e to the negative 3.2189 will give me 0.04, or pretty close, because I did have to round it to four decimals. All right, let's look at this example. Here we have 5 to the x equals 24. Well, I know 5 squared is 25. So this number, whatever x is, whatever that power may be, it's going to be pretty close to 2 because this is almost 5 squared. So if I want to solve this one, I'm going to introduce that log. I'm going to say log base 10, in this case, of 5x and log base 10 of 24. Use that power rule and bring that out front. x log base 10 of 5 equals log base 10 of 24. To get x by itself, I divide by this value. x equals log of 24 divided by log of 5. This is something we can put in our calculators because it is essentially change of base. We went from a base of 5 to a base of 10. We put that into our calculator, and we get 1.97. Four, six. Hopefully, you get that same result. You're working along uh, using your calculator, and you get this result, 1.9746. And initially, I said it should be pretty close to 2. That number is pretty close to 2. Here we have pi to the x equals 17.8. Pi is just an irrational number. It should be a value on your calculator. Go ahead and try to solve this one uh, for x. All right? Give it a shot. Make sure you check it. Raise pi to the value you find. You can use a natural log. You can use uh, base 10, whatever you choose. Let's look at some examples where we're dealing with logarithmic equations. The last ones were exponential. Now, <clears throat> with a logarithmic equation, the most essential thing to do is to isolate a single logarithm. If we look at this example, we already have a single logarithm equal to a value. And what I can do is there's different versions we can look at. We can say, hey, since this is a log equal to a number, I can just rewrite it as an exponential equation. My base is e, because it is a natural log. The power is negative 2, and its value is x. So now this is something I could plug into my calculator. And before we do that, let's look at essentially why we can do that. What are we doing using a property of equality? Well, if I identify the base of e in the exponential equations, I took the natural log of both sides. Well, here, I'm no, I identify a base of e. So maybe I want to introduce e to that power. Because one of the rules of logarithms is if these have the same base, they reduce to 1. It gives me x by itself. So if I do this, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So if I raise both sides to that base, e to the ln of x equals e to the negative second, their powers are the same. So if their powers are the same and I can simplify this, I get x equals e to the negative second. And that's exactly what we had when we rewrote the equation in exponential form. The base is e, the power is negative 2, the argument is x. Base e, power negative 2, argument x. So we used a property of equality instead of just rewriting it. Because as these equations become more complicated, you, you might want to introduce the uh, base to be the base of each side and the, what it's equal to to be the powers. So we get that value. That's something we can plug into a calculator, which I've already done. And I got uh, x equals 0.1353. So this is our solution for this value. And you can check it. Take the natural log of this value, and you should get negative 2 or something close to negative 2. All right, let's look at this logarithmic equation. 
Now, what we have to do with the logarithmic equation is to isolate a logarithm on one side of the equation. So we have to use the properties of logarithms since I have a log here minus a log here. They have the same base, so I can initiate the properties of logarithms. When I see the subtraction of two logs, well, to write them as a single logarithm, I would do the division. Log base 4 of the first one over the second argument. So we have that subtraction equals log 4 of 8. Now, one thing we should do as we uh, always have done in the previous videos is simplify as we go. x squared minus 49, I know that that's the difference of squares. And that would factor to x plus 7, x minus 7. So I can reduce this fraction because those factors would reduce to 1. So I have log base 4 of x minus 7 equals log base 4 of 8. Now recall, when they had the same base, their powers were equal. Well, here we have logarithms of the same base, which means their arguments are equal. So I could do one of two things. I could raise both sides to be a base of 4, reducing these values. And I essentially get x minus 7 equals 8. And now I can solve for x, add 7 to both sides, x equals 15. And if I go back to the original equation and check this, 15 squared minus 49 is 176, minus log base 4 of 15 plus 7 is 22. Well, if I take this one and divide it by 22, 176 divided by 2 is 8. Log base 4 of 8 is equal to log base 4 of 8. So you can check your work that way. Uh, so this is our solution. Let's look at another example. Now, in this example, we had two logarithms equal to a single logarithm. Here we have the sum of logarithms equal to a number. We're going to use the exact same property no matter how we see it. The first thing I want to do is write this as a single logarithm. Since I see it's addition, I can rewrite this as the log base 3 of x times x minus 8, which gives me x squared minus 8x. That's equal to 2. Now, since I don't have a logarithm on this side, I can't say that this argument equals that value. What I have to do is introduce something to get rid of this logarithm. Well, if the base is 3, if I raise this side to be the power of 3, log base 3 of x squared minus 8x is the power of 3, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Now, our property of log says, well, this reduces to 1. One of these arguments, x squared minus 8x equals 3 squared is 9. And now this is something I can solve using quadratic methods. x squared minus 8x minus 9 equals 0. This would factor to x minus 9, x plus 1. And if I find those solutions, x equals 9 and negative 1. It is essential that we check our work. If I put these values in here, log base 3 of 9, well, 3 squared is 9, so this value would be 2. Log base 3 of 9 minus 8, 9 minus 8 is 1. The log of 1, regardless of its base, is 0. 2 plus 0 is 2. That's a true statement. But if I try negative 1, log base 3 of negative 1, we always have to recall we cannot take the log of a negative value because that's not within the domain. If we tried to use our calculator, it would even tell us that that's a domain error. So negative 1 is extraneous. And I know that because I checked my answer. Make sure you're checking your work. All right. One last example, and this is for you to do. It's a kind of a combination of the last two examples we've done. Here we have the natural log of x plus the natural log of the quantity x minus 1 equals the natural log of 2. So go ahead and write this as a single logarithm and set their arguments equal. Solve it. Make sure that you check your work. 
So this has been section 8.7. Thank you for watching.